The latest CLA EQ is not only the best electric car in the Mercedes portfolio, but I think it's one of the best electric cars to come out in 2025 from a legacy OEM. But there is an issue, and I think it could become a problem for some EV owners. And what's the problem? It can only charge at chargers which can support a DC output voltage of 800 volts or higher. Apart from a couple of sites, it means that it cannot charge at around 60,000 superchargers across the globe, around 18,000 in Europe and 30,000 in US. And secondly, for most of the chargers installed in developed countries, which are 50 kilowatts or lower, it will not be able to charge on them as well. Just a quick remark, I'm just talking about DC chargers over here, which are supporting CCS outlets. CLA EQ was launched last month. It has a sleek design, innovative features, and most importantly, it's highly efficient. It's the first ever Mercedes to be built on 800 volt battery architecture, which means that it can support a staggering 320 kilowatt charging peak. 10 to 80% could be charged in 22 minutes, and on a single battery, it can travel up to 792 kilometers. Also, it is the first Mercedes to have a frunk, it can travel with a speed of 210 km per hour and with the top end specs, it can travel 0 to 100 km per hour in just 4.9 seconds. And while I was trying to configure, I just wanted to see what the trims are, what the specs are. One thing stood out to me. It said on the website, DC fast charging is only possible at charging stations that support 800 volt technology. Charging is not possible at 400 volt charging station and therefore it's not displayed in the navigation. So naturally the question comes up is why does it matter and what are these chargers that Mercedes is talking about? I had the privilege to work at a leading electric charger manufacturers over a period of four years and in that time I realized from 2000 up to let's say 2020, 2021 ish, the 50 kilowatt DC chargers or even below like for example 20 kilowatt DC chargers they were not able to deliver a DC output which was higher than 400 volts. This was sort of acceptable norm because if somebody wanted to charge at a higher speed, let's say 150 kilowatts, 170 or 300 kilowatts, of course all of these chargers were able to support DC output voltage of 800 volts and higher. So after 2022, whenever people were buying 50 kilowatt chargers, then there was a shift in strategy at least in Europe that they were buying higher voltage chargers, for example from Alpitronic. Their 50 kilowatt can support up to 1000 volts. That means that it will work with Mercedes CLA EQ. Same goes for APB Terra 54. They have a normal standard version, which only supports up to 400 volts, but then they have a higher voltage version, which can support up to 920 volts, which will also be able to work with Mercedes CLA EQ. But majority of the charges, 20 kilowatts, 50 kilowatts, that have been installed in developed countries, let's say Germany, France, Netherlands, from 2010 up to 2022 and as per my analysis nearly 25 percent of all dc charge points in germany will not be supported by mercedes cla eu so that was what types of charger we are talking about any charges above 50 kilowatts will naturally be able to support mercedes cla eq charging except tesla but i will come to that later so the next part where I want to deep dive is when charging limitation occurs and what are the factors. So charging limitation could happen because firstly of battery architecture of the vehicle, if it supports 400 volts or 800 volts. Secondly, the DC output voltage of the charger, which in case we just learned, it could be 400 volts or 800 volts plus up to 1000 volts. And thirdly, the current rating of the CCS cable, if it's 400 amps, 300 amps, or maybe 500 amps. In my example scenarios, I will be using 500 amps as a standard. So the first example is for a vehicle which is built on 400 volt battery architecture. In the first example, it visits a charger which can support a maximum of 400 volts and is equipped with 500 amps cable. In that scenario, it can get a maximum peak of 200 kilowatts. In the second scenario, this vehicle goes to a charger which can deliver 800 volts plus DC output voltage and 500 amps cable. In this case, still it can only charge with a peak of 200 kilowatts, although the charger could deliver more, but it's that the vehicle cannot accept it. 
Now let's look at a car which is built on 800 volt architecture. In the first scenario, this vehicle visits a 400 volt charger equipped with a 500 amp cable. In this scenario, it can also charge at a peak of 200 kilowatts. Although the vehicle can theoretically take up to 800 volts, but it is limited by the charger. And in the last scenario, this vehicle goes to a charger which can support 800 volt plus DC output voltage and has a 500 amp cable. And now in this scenario, it can charge with a maximum peak of 400 kilowatts. So now let's narrow it down to Mercedes CLA EQ. Where does it fit in? It fits in in the last two scenarios, 800 volt battery architecture vehicle going in the first scenario to 400 volt charger and in the second scenario going to a charger which can support 800 volt plus. So Mercedes CLA EQ will be able to charge at any charger which supports 800 volt plus, but it will not be able to charge at any charger which has the maximum DC output voltage of 400 volts. And you might be thinking at this point, what happens with all the other vehicles that have 800 volt battery architecture? Can they not charge at 400 volt chargers? And why haven't we heard such news before? Let me tell you why. There are numerous 800 volt architecture vehicles. For example, Porsche Taycan, Porsche Macan, Audi Q6 e-tron, Hyundai Ioniq 5, Kia EV6, Kia EV9, Lucid Air, and even Tesla Cybertruck. But we never had such issues. The reason? Mercedes decided against using a DC-DC converter, 400 volts to 800 volts. The earliest 800 volt battery architecture vehicles, for example, Porsche Taycan, and even Lucid Air today, they use DC-DC converter. But what does it mean that if a car does not have a DC-DC converter, can it not charge at 400 volt chargers? It can charge. So I think at this point, I will break down why the vehicles built on 800 volt architecture charge at 400 volts. The first is the DC-DC converter. Over here, the prominent example is Porsche Taycan Lucid Air. These cars are equipped with DC-DC converter. And if you decided to charge at a 400 volt charger, the maximum output it was able to get was 50 kilowatts. But for the first generation Porsche Taycan, they were selling a DC-DC converter for $460, which meant that it can then boost the charging up to 150 kilowatts. And now the second example where some manufacturers have opted against using DC-DC converter. The prominent examples over here are Porsche Macan, Audi Q6 e-tron and Tesla Cybertruck. So how do they work without DC-DC converter? The approach around this concept is to build up battery packs in multiple modules. For example, Porsche Macan, it has two times 400 volts battery packs, whereas Tesla Cybertruck has four times 200 volts battery packs. And how it supports 800 volts as well as 400 volt architecture is that they are using relays to dynamically switch the configuration of battery from series to parallel. But Mercedes for CLA EQ, they decided against it. But now we are coming to the point why Mercedes CLA EQ cannot use Tesla superchargers. Because as of right now, I've established that Mercedes CLA EQ will not be able to use 50 kilowatt DC charge points and lower, which were produced, let's say, from 2010 up to 2021. And I mentioned that any charger, even which was produced in 2017 and it was able to deliver above 150 kilowatts, naturally Mercedes CLA EQ will be able to use because they can support 800 volts and more. But the question pops up, and that's why I had to do a lot of research. We know Tesla V2 superchargers, they can support 150 kilowatts. The V3 superchargers, they can support 250 kilowatts. Then came the V3.5, which could support up to 325 kilowatts. And the latest ones, the V4, are going to support 500 kilowatts. But why is it not going to work with Tesla superchargers? And here is the breakdown. So I'm not going to go quite back in the history, but let's say I will start from V2 superchargers. A typical V2 supercharger, it is made up of a V2 post and a V2 cabinet. And for the V2 superchargers, the cabinet is the limiting factor because it can provide a maximum voltage of 410 volts. Now let's look at V3 superchargers. The post itself can support 425 amperes and 1000 volts DC output voltage. But the V3 cabinet is the limiting factor because according to the specification, it can deliver a maximum of 631 amps 
and 500 volts DC output voltage. Therefore, even though it can charge vehicles up to 250 kilowatts, Mercedes CLA EQ cannot use V3 chargers. Now let's look at the latest generation, the V4 post. They came in very beautiful colors. These posts can deliver a maximum current of 615 amperes and a maximum DC output voltage of 1000 volts. But the V4 that are being installed all across the globe are not really true V4 because it's a V4 post, but on the back, the cabinet is V3, which theoretically makes it a V3.5 version. Again, the limiting factor is the V3 cabinet, which can deliver a maximum of 500 volts. The true V4 superchargers are being slowly, steadily rolled out. And as of last month, I think there were only four or five sites that were true V4s, meaning that it had a V4 post as well as a V4 cabinet at the back which can support up to 1000 volts, meaning a maximum power output of 500 kilowatts. One thing I would like to add over here is for the V3.5 charge boost, because in certain scenarios, it was able to deliver up to 325 kilowatts. And the reason was Tesla is able to give temporary boost of current. And what was happening in 3.5 version was that the current on the cables was boosted up to around 830 to 850 amperes. And if you consider the voltage of 500 volts, then it means that the vehicle could charge at around 320, 325 kilowatts. So these 3.5 version Tesla superchargers can vary the charging current, but the voltage remain constant. So looking at the numbers and understanding the full scale of it, nearly 18,000 superchargers across Europe will not be supported by Mercedes CLA EQ. I think what's going to happen, even if you're going to try, you're going to put a CCS plug into your vehicle. And I think during the communication, it will give an error. So these were the two questions that were bothering me the most. The first one, why did Mercedes opt for this strategy? And secondly, is Mercedes going to give an optional upgrade in the future? As far as my understanding for the second question, in Europe, they do not plan to give any upgrade for DC-DC converter. But I've heard rumors that in US, they might bring out a DC-DC converter, which means a person living in USA could charge at around 30,000 superchargers. And I know I made a mistake in the sequencing, but for the first and the most important question, why? did Mercedes opt for this strategy. I wrote an article about it and posted on LinkedIn to understand what could be the reason. And finally, two people who have some insider knowledge, they gave me really good replies, I would say. The first one is Wolf Schlachter, probably the biggest name in immobility in Germany. He is a CEO, has founded multiple startups and worked as a member of board across various companies from CPOs to MSPs, etc. And the second one is Mark Stubbs, who is working at the biggest CPO in UK for EV charging. And they both pointed towards the same thing. It seems like that Mercedes is trying to strengthen its partner network. And who is the partner network in Europe? Ionity, which is a joint venture of multiple OEMs, including Mercedes, BMW, Audi, Porsche, Volkswagen, Kia, and Hyundai. And how it would work? So if we consider the customers of Mercedes, as well as from all of these OEMs, in future do not visit Tesla superchargers, which have enormous numbers across Europe. Instead, for fast charging, they come to Ionity. And that means Ionity can increase their utilization rates, which means that it could become profitable, which means breaking the monopoly of Tesla when it comes to charging in Europe, as well as strengthening the finances of each player in Ionity. Is Ionity as big as Tesla? No. As of today, there are around 5,000 charge points from Ionity across Europe, whereas Tesla has 18,000 charge points. From these 18,000 charge points, 20% are V2 superchargers, which means only 150 kilowatts, but the rest 80% can support 250 kilowatts and 3.5 can support also 325 kilowatts. Here's a distinct advantage of Ionity. 95% of the charge point across Europe can support 350 kilowatts charging. And during the next 4.5 years, they are going to expand their charge points from 5,000 to 13,000. And this was just announced in May 2025 after Mercedes CLA EQ announcement. So all of this kind of aligns basically. As for USA, if Mercedes opts for an optional DC-DC converter, yeah, then the people will be happy over there because they can access 30,000 Tesla superchargers or 
there could be a similar strategy over in US as well, because there is CPO in US, which has a similar leadership structure, I would say, and it is called Iona, which is a joint venture, I would say, from automotive OEMs such as Mercedes, BMW, General Motors, Kia, Toyota, etc. And they are also installing 400 kilowatt fast chargers. So it could be the case that they are going to use the exact same strategy, forcing people to not use Tesla. And maybe this is the strategy that Mercedes has opted for. And perhaps we might see the same strategy in the upcoming 800 volt architecture vehicles maybe from audi from hyundai from kia from general motors you name it all of these oem join hands and make cars in a way that people have to skip tesla superchargers perhaps in the next seven eight years they will break their monopoly and will be a serious competitor in europe with ionity and in us with iona so for iona it was just my assumption uh, i don't have any insider knowledge on it at all it's just that it looks kind of similar According to Mercedes and a lot of people I have been in discussion with, they are saying if the vehicle is going to support 792 kilometers range, um, you will not need a lot of charging stops. And even if you do, it's going to come after a very long time. That means you will always be able to find an 800 volt charger. So that was it. This was not a review of Mercedes CLA EQ, but I just wanted to break down from an industry perspective, the technical breakdown, the good thing about these cars. And I would not say the bad things but at least perplexing thing it's difficult to understand the decision At this point in time i'm not able to fully grasp the context how difficult it will make a life of an ev driver if you found the video insightful kindly consider liking my video sharing it and subscribing to my channel because it will help me a lot and if you're interested in industry specific insights yes please check out my linkedin because i have a newsletter over there over there i publish articles much more in depth Take care. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.